Epistemology, this million dollar word, most people treat it as how we know what we know. A study of how knowledge comes to be, how it's produced in our brains, how we uh, acquire it, um, what kind of a thing it is. And it's probably best understood as in contrast to how things just are. Um, knowledge about things is not a thing. And I think Gregory was quite clear about that. He naturally asked himself, you know, what is it to know? How do we know? And so he got into epistemology. And he saw it as uh, part of uh, natural science, part of biology or, or uh, natural history. He didn't see it as an abstract philosophical field. I would like you to assume that that's been drawn more carefully, that these angles are what they should be, and those are what they should be. And I want you to think for a moment how you will describe that to some other person. First of all, there is a small minority who say it looks like a boot. Uh, these are the analogic picture thinkers, you see. But of course, there isn't any boot. And to describe the boot which it looks like would be as laborious as to say it looks like a boot. Uh, then there are the people who break it into parts. And they will say, well, it's a hexagon, uh, but it isn't a hexagon. And a rectangle, which isn't a rectangle. And by describing what it nearly is, but isn't quite, they get a sort of description out. And the division, of course, into parts is purely arbitrary. They could have sliced it any way they wanted, and you see, it would be interesting if they had sliced it like that. But inconvenient. <laughs> and the point I'm getting at, you see, is that the division of things into parts tends to be a device of convenience. And that's all. Gregory liked to quote Blake in saying, wise men see outlines and therefore they draw them. And when he takes the chalk and draws the line across what I see as a boot, he illustrates for us the arbitrariness of the kind of separations that are created by defining things. So that when we define something as separate from something else, we create limits to our ability to see the interrelationships and the dynamics of those interrelationships. So that is why Gregory also liked to quote Blake in saying, madmen see outlines and therefore they draw them. And then there are the people who are the real scientists and they see, I didn't draw this one very well, but there is an imaginary line and which if it were drawn properly, defines various, well, limits. These are scientists, you see. They look for a relation uh, which isn't really there, in terms of which they will describe this thing. All right, now, you see, what's reality? Now, these people are not in disagreement about the figure. Uh, nobody ever mentions, of course, that it's a figure done in chalk on a blackboard. But it's made of this funny white stuff. I've never had one mention that. Indeed, I think only a psychotic would do that. <laughs> you know, they're the ones who say the ink blot looks like a blot of ink. <laughs> <laughs> this is very sick. <laughs> On the whole, we can get a certain amount of agreement, you know, about what's really there. But we cannot get agreement 
about ways of describing it. And we use in the description a whole mass of concepts of intervening variables and mentionables to, to get our stuff across.